Now, as we see you, scenes where you like land as Iron Man and you come out of the suit and it's like peeling back off your body, yeah. how do they do that? Is it's so cool looking? Very skillfully. I mean, it really is the the best folks in the business. And you know, you always have to lean into and be comforted by the fact that even though I feel like a schmuck right now while I'm stepping out of nothing into nothing and walking past a camera, um, you just have to. You just have to. It's like somebody who's who's not a good dancer, but they're just out there just like bringing it, you know? And you're like, I love that confidence. That's what you need to really make the effects work. You have to sell it like it's happening. Like, because I get excited as, as you do. Nerd tears. I get nerd tears. Yes. I get so geeked out that I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> Literally nerd tears streaming down my face as I'm watching these action That's scenes. That's awesome. When you're in the HUD, the HUD helmet and the helmet and we see you flying, yes. how does that look on set? What are you looking at? What are you seeing? How do they do that? I'm basically sitting in an airport shiatsu massage chair backwards um, with a camera about a quarter of an inch away from my nose going, all right, what's going on? If they showed you the outtakes from that, you would laugh your ass off. <laughs> what are you like? Are, you, are they shining lights in your face so it looks like there's things going off? How do they do that? It's a combination of just an extreme-ish close-up. Um, being told, are we flying? Are we upside down? Should I be looking left, right? What's going on? What am I doing? Oh, yeah, yes, I'm worried about Pepper. Or just saying a bunch of technical jargon to, you know, Jarvis or whatever. And then they overlay that sense to make it seem, you know, multi dimensional. Now, take me back to the 2008 when you made the first Iron Man. Favreau did a lot of practical effects. I know Whedon does some practical effects as well, but they've gotten, I guess, more CGI because all the, the action scenes are more intense and more insane in these movies sure. over the years. What, was the, what is the biggest difference and similarity to filming the first Iron Man and now Avengers 2? Um, on the first one, we felt like we were trying to add a new menu item to a to you know a, a restaurant that uh, well, like chef, like the movie. <laughs> like you know there's all these formulas that already work, so how could we make our own signature dish? And since then, I see that there was always this back line of, of talent and kind of vision behind us. And they kept replicating different versions of different formulas together. And they obviously all come together in the Avengers franchise. Yes. Awesome to see you. Thank you hey, so man. much for the interview. You're always wonderful to talk to. Oh, thanks, Thank man. you so much. All right. First of all, congratulations <laughs> to you guys. You guys know I nerd out about movies all the time. So No doubt about you. I, yeah, I, I nerd about you, man. So you're the whole wise. Yes, we did the little dab and a hug. We did, we did. Boys, yeah. boys. The other interview he made you like, look uh, wicked cool in the hallway. He did. Yeah. Everyone else in the hallway was like, uh, every girl was like, uh, who is this guy? Do you know him? Yeah. I got to talk about the beginning shot, though. The continuous take that How that great does. is that? I want to ask you, once the take get, uh, gets to all of you and you're jumping yeah. out mm. in slow-mo, how do they do that shot on set? No idea. I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't remember any yeah. of those shots being fair. <laughs> like, it's 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 the magic of the Marvel. individual bits yeah like the leap or whatever yeah a obviously jump on a green or something screen. it's green screen all separate green screens yeah. okay and somehow overlay them and so you were on like a motorcycle or whatever yeah. the device yeah. was they just kind of like add just, the shots they, in. they make it's it all horse, work but they actually painted it like a that's motorcycle right. that's right that's right that's not good on the yeah. and that's, I, I just yeah. prefer the horses. animal Love no, i understand he's a bit of an animal himself animals are good yeah it works well in the marvel universe because i'm a big fan of the movie snowpiercer if you could drop thor and captain america onto that train Oh. How would they? What would? How would they survive? What, what they would, would have they taken do? over. It would have been their train. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Wilford is done. <laughs> Thor is at the front of the train. <laughs> yes, Ed Harris. Yeah. Done. Yeah. You're done. <laughs> I want to see that. Now, I love the scene in the beginning of the, uh, in the film where you guys are trying to pick up the the hammer. And I wanted to know, in the in the movie world, when you guys were trying to actually lift it, how did they keep it down? What were what were they doing? They actually couldn't lift it. <laughs> <laughs> that scene wasn't the meant hammer to be is like method. That. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really I was like, good act. Guys, it's not that heavy. And they're like, actually, it is. So that became the joke. Originally, it was like, we're all worthy, aren't we? Amazing. What a team. And then they couldn't pick it up. So. <laughs> But yeah. seriously though, like, is it like, is it like nailed down? <laughs> <laughs> it is. T hammer. Uh, T hammer. They did nail it down. I think initially, they nailed it down, and then we lifted it, and the whole table came up. Yeah. So I think ultimately they ended up doing something where they kind of secured everything. And, right. Yeah, they did like bolted it into the floor. <laughs> yeah, it had to be. Yeah. I loved, loved, loved what you did with Chris Pratt and the Super Bowl bet and everything. You guys oh, were visiting yeah, this. Yeah. The, the, it was incredible what you were able to do. I'm wondering if there was to be a Thor Captain America bet. Well, he's got to start like in real sports. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's Australian football? What is this nonsense? 
I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what that. I don't even know what that. Uh, <laughs> no, you know what? You said you played it though. I, I saw. Played, yeah. I saw an right. Australian football. Australian rugby, not Australian football. Australian rugby. Yeah, it's much. It's much. It's a tougher sport. It's not. So every guy is six five. Every guy is a Just monster kidding. out there. <laughs> it's true. It's it's a very dangerous <clears throat> sport. Um, it's nothing compared to American football. <laughs> Well, because we don't wear padding and helmets and stuff. Because oh, if you oh, didn't, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get stopped in customs spine. for I mean, I We need a bet here. Patriots yeah. versus one of his oh, teams. Man. About, I wish Brandon Australian Brown are going to be coming across the middle and just take out one of these guys. Just, you Stretcher. <laughs> what, a bet? We could go. Well, we're talking about the Floyd uh, oh, Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pacquiao well, who are you fight. taking? Well, I went Pacquiao. I'll and take you went Mayweather. Mayweather. Okay. All right, there it is. Right, so Boom. Happens? There it is. Right. One million uh -oh. dollars. <laughs> I mean, cents. One. How many? How many dollars is that? A million cents. If you it's win, like seriously, bucks, yeah. well, how, how, how does this play out? How does this play out if you win? Uh, um, I don't know. Look what you're doing to us right now. You're doing it. You're doing yeah. it. You know yeah. what you're doing. Come on. You know what you're doing. Come on. I know what I'm doing. How does this play out? Um, you. Give me the bet. This is a real bet. This is, all, this is on camera. I know. Yeah. That's, that's why. This, we I have told to you, one lightly. million. I mean, one million. <laughs> one million real, a realistic bet. Push up. Um, um. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, you have to um, wear the Thor costume and the Thor wig. In the, in, all, in the next movie. Win win. In the next yeah. movie? Are the Russo Bros going to allow that? What do I wear? No. Come on, give us something. What's, uh, what, do we, what do we wager? Oh, man. I don't know. Um. um you this is permanent. Uh, <laughs> this is permanent. We you, all know those you red get, lights you, you, permanent. You get one of my children. <laughs> Deal. And, Deal. But if I win, Can I, I get you as my fourth child. <laughs> okay. All right. Win okay. win. <laughs> Damn, that sucks again for me, doesn't it? How did Ultron look on set? Was there any motion capture involved? And how do they make the character look eight feet tall? Do they put you on stilts? How do they do that? It was, it, you know, the the technology has changed quite a bit, and that. Prior to this, you, prior to I think maybe our film, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but um, if you were a, a, a you know a computer generated character, um, animated character like he is, um, then you would be on set sort of off camera, hmm. uh, and then your performance would be and, and you'd be there for the other actors to play across from and so on, and obviously you would voice it, um, but your physicality would be captured in a motion capture stage. Um, after principal photography was over, or concurrently when you when they didn't need you on the on the set. Um, in this case, uh, I was wearing a fractal suit and big sort of backpack with all kinds of things, you know. And then, uh, depending on what stage of Ultron it was, I also had some sort of these sort of braces that were putting his his body in different positions and weights and balances and so on and so forth. And then a big head rig that then had headlights like here that were circular lights with cameras inside that were recording my face all the time. And then I was standing on the ground, but there was also a rod that came out of the back of my backpack and went up to eight feet tall or whatever, wow. however tall he is. And up there were also two little eyes, uh, little red eyes so that the actors playing across would play to that as his height. Um, except in certain cases where they would just, where the blocking was such where we would be able to be on the same plane and be able to play. And, and then in our scenes, actually, we were always on the same right. plane. Um, so we were just playing head to head. Uh, I'm but, nerding out right now. This is yeah, insane. <laughs> it was really crazy. And anyway, so the the technology is advanced so that they were able to do performance capture on the set with the other actors, with me just in this rig. And then the only drag of it was that I had never thought of is that I was being filmed all the time. My face was filmed all the time. Even if the camera was pointed at the other actor and therefore it would be perceived as being their coverage and I would be off camera, still I was being filmed by those cameras there. <laughs> And even on the in, in, in post production, when I was doing voiceover work, uh, you know, doing vo additional voice uh, recording, uh, I was my face was being filmed all the time, so that they could get expression and eyes and you know all the rest of that. Are you full blown practical makeup in the sense of when when we when you become the Vision, or is that is there any CGI involved at all on your on your outfit? There's some CG going on in terms of uh, my eyes and and stuff. Yeah. But, but he's but wearing was, that but stuff. I'm wearing yeah. that stuff, yeah. When Downey Jr. is in the Hulkbuster suit and you're obviously green and big Hulk, is there any element of you two fighting in a mocap element? How do they get that scene to work? Is that all CGI? 
That's uh, uh well, so they do this. The the mo they do uh Veronica is completely CGI, and then all, I'm all my reactions and fighting to Veronica are done, basically with uh, a, another stuntman, <sighs> usually a really tall one. This guy was like seven six, and so um, I was. I did all the fighting against him, but Robert didn't do any of that because he's actually, all they're doing is capturing his face and that stuff. Wow, so you're literally having a sequence where they, they, they mo-cap the, the yeah, element they, to make it look like- Yeah, they mo-cap this fight between the two of us. That's so sick, And they'll man. do it in pieces, you know? When you drop out of that plane on the motorcycle, though, um, is that you at all? How, like, how, is that, how does that moment get done? Um, some parts of it are, it's also a kind of mish, mishmash Mash. of, like, different pieces, so. Um, you know, like I will, a lot of the motorcycle stuff I do is like kind of stationary and then, um, so, like it's kind of, it's very unattractive, but it's me basically like very unattractively straddling this kind of a green <laughs> yes, thing I and doing all this weird, of, like yes, up in the air. People see that really stuff. unattractive. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> I think him and I are on the same page here. That's not <laughs> I unattractive at I don't all. Think a lot of it is like kind of you're sort of like elevated because they they get a lot of shots that are like under you, so you're kind of on all these different strange. And are they moving versions. it like they this? move it around, but then it's also like lifted up on the thing, like a like mechanical a bowl almost, like kind of like that. Yes, it's like it's, a mechanical bowl. Yeah. And then there's and then there's actually like real motorcycles up, and then we also had an amazing stunt motorcycle rider who like did all she's like the best in the world like motocross incredible that went to korea and did all the street stuff and it's all it's all a mystery yeah. wow it looks like you it looks Thank it looks really welcome. cool i would <laughs> swear it was you oh would you stop i swear to god <laughs> would you did, just stop wasn't thought, the first I thing i said you. to him was i thought the motorcycle yeah. stuff was really he did cool. say that before that the interview started oh i'm glad you thought it was you thought it was cool yeah no, he you, thought it was you i was, I was saying I you know you. that there's no possible way that I could have ridden through the streets of Korea. I like, wouldn't put it past you, knowing you as well as I do. You know there's what? Nothing I take that you as a compliment. Do. You should. Thank you. Finally, you guys have both done incredible films in low-budget environments and and very big-budget environments. And I'm wondering, when you approach a character in a film like Under the Skin or even Foxcatcher or Zodiac, anything like that, is there an element of approaching the character any differently in that world than it is here? No. No, it's pretty much the same. I think it is. Mm -hmm. The process is the same, I think, and um, you know, honestly, I think I think the only difference is that probably when you do a smaller film like that, you because the budget is so small, you have more time to rehearse because it's like okay, once we get on set, we're gonna be burning. We have this very short. Days. You know, we have twenty three days to shoot, you know, the same size script or whatever, As and Avengers. you know, yeah, and so you need you you have kind of you're more you have more time to prepare. I think with the actual you know the other actors or whatever you want to kind of conserve your your time and and on a set like Avengers, we have much more room to kind of play on set than you would on, on a film that's got a tighter budget. But, but, but the preparation is pretty much the same, the except same. you don't get to rehearse as much. Huh. Well, it's awesome to see you guys. Congratulations Thank to you, you guys. Thank you. One thing I loved about the beginning was the long, continuous take that you did again. Mm -hmm. uh, you did in the first one. Can you explain to me how you actually pull that shot off in this film, and then once you end it on the shot of them kind of running all together, how does that look on set when you shoot that? So how do you pull that off? Um, well, you you... You shoot as much practically as you can, but obviously Iron Man, Hulk, and a lot of flying around, that's not going to be. Um, you, uh, we had a uh, place in the woods that we scouted. Um, we set up enormous runs with a spider cam, which is basically you know, a camera that's on wires that can go every which way. And um, with, there's the Jeep, and we just sort of lead it. And you take it as far as you can. And then you stitch it together with another part of the shot, and you sort of break it up into say basically sort of three main bits, where it's like we're in this environment, and then we connect it to this environment, and we connect, and uh, and then you know you start adding and adding and adding, and and that is always that was the last shot that was delivered. It was the last thing we did in the movie was finalize uh, the color timing on that shot. That's when we finished. What do you call that shot, by the way? The tie-in shot. Oh, such an awesome and, shot. And. Uh, yeah, we had one in the last film. That was the last shot delivered in, in, the, in the last film as well. And because um, they're just enormously labor intensive. Yeah. And we wanted, but we did it right at the beginning because we wanted to say, this is why you came. <laughs> Boom, here it is. Let's not, let's not, you know, 
Let's not mince words. In fact, let's not even use words. Let's just get right in. <laughs> and then um, and then and then we'll see what comes after that. But the final shot of them actually leaping when they're all in the same mm -hmm. shot, do you shoot them individually at one point and then just drop them in? Is that how that works? Yeah, that's all elements put together after the fact. Um, because um, or before the fact, you, 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 because we couldn't. There was no way we were going to get all of those people lined up, and because again, some of them are flying yeah. and some of them are Hulk. Yeah. Now you come from a big background of practical effects. I mean, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was mm -hmm. basically, I think, 100 percent practical in the sense of well, most of it. Well, was. Well, the CG was lame enough that we tried to be practical yeah, it looked as often great, as possible. Though. But I want to ask you, what is the difference for you in directing CGI versus practical effects? And is there anything in this movie that you wish you could have done practically that had just had to be done CGI? You know, the only problem with, with CGI is that when you're in a space on the day um, with, with an actor, practically, you, you're, you're able to do things in the frame that you know you can't necessarily do with a CGI character. And so sometimes... Uh, because there are, you know, I have two of the main characters are purely CG um, in this film. Sometimes you sort of, in order to solve problems when you're putting it together later, you, you know, you don't have time to work out the same kind of intricate movement and stuff with the camera. And so it's, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you, you lose that because on the day they're not standing there in front of you going, hey, I'm Chris Hemsworth, how are you going to shoot me? And your brain is sort of going, and there's going to be this character too. But then you sort of, it's hard when you're trying to get the actor's shot to remember. I need the same kind of filmic vernacular for this, for this character. So mm. that's the only thing. Now, when you could take on a sequel like this, obviously the first one was so massive, do you go back and look at the film and go, okay, I should have done that differently, I made a mistake there, and I want to fix it in this one. Do you or do you look at your film like that? You know, I didn't actually look at the first one until a couple of days ago with my kids. They were like, let's watch the first one again. Um, and I was like, oh, this movie. I really, I, we kept saying we should watch the first one, but we never had time. Um, uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm too busy going, look at all the mistakes in this one to worry about the mistakes in the first one. Um, there's definitely things we go, well, let's try to do better with this. And I think the most obvious being Captain America's costume, which is way better in this. It is awesome. Each of you, for you specifically, when you're running, as we see you on camera, I know there's clearly effects added in there, but how, what does it look like for you on set when you're doing that? Like, are you actually running and they speed you up? How do they do it? Yeah, they Pietro did. Pietro Pass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they call it the Pietro Pass. So we'll do the scene, shoot the scene. And if I was running into that shot, uh, then everyone would step out of the shot and then I'd have my own where the camera hasn't moved at all, so it's like the same plate. And then I'd run and do the whole thing again. Uh, oh. But then, yeah, the special effects guys would say, you know, we need it, because we're going to blur everything, we need you to sort of do a lot more movement, so it's not just a straight run. So I'd have to run sort of like, just sort of like <laughs> silly running with like arms waving and kind of dark, not in straight lines, but, you know, we enough for to them to speed it up and then, <laughs> then they add effects to it. So, yeah, so wherever there is running, it was me doing it, and then you know. But it's so quick, you could just you could assume it was all just computer graphics. But it was you. That's really cool for you. Obviously, uh, uh, forgive me for not knowing the name of when you're releasing the energy. Sure. Uh, I guess is how you call it. Yeah. Do you see anything? Is there an eye line? Is in the sense of like, how do you know where you're throwing things? Like, what does Joss tell you? <laughs> There's no eye line. <laughs> I mean, occasionally we would have a bunch of stunt guys in their, what are those outfits called? Those onesies with all the spots on Mocap them. suits. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Occasionally we would have those guys there as references. Um, but most of the time they put special effects to what we're looking at. Okay. I think that's but what how it is, works. all your stuff was almost in dance moves, so you knew yeah. that you was building. I always knew I always knew exactly where I was in my imagination. No one else knew about it though. <laughs> She's the, the scene, I got I get the things called nerd tears. I get so geeked out that I get teary eyed. When you slow mode and punched Captain yeah. America, which is Such in the trailer, is that a spoiler? How does that look? Are you like is that just like you going past him and like barely skimming his face? How do you do that? Um, it's like two guys that's who are really just good at really stunts. great timing from <laughs> yeah. Chris and, and very close fist from my yeah, like I'm pretty sure almost that we very close at like hitting each other. Did you yeah. ever accidentally hit him? I'm trying to think actually if we did ever have like a Nick. I feel like there was, but I, I, you know. But yeah, he, I mean, his timing was so expert. Like, but yeah, I'd run past and, you know, duck and then swing a punch close to his face. Yeah. And his timing was amazing. Like, 
I was nerding It was out. so close. Like crazy. Because I was like proper winding up a punch too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to see this happen. Get Matthew Vaughn on the phone. Let's do Kick-Ass versus Quicksilver. How would that go down? Because is there any way Kick-Ass could survive Quicksilver? <laughs> no. Kick-Ass has never actually had he's any like a power. Child. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just an illusion. Just because he's got an outfit doesn't mean he can do anything. So. When you have to have an accent change in a film, what is the hardest part about doing the accent, and do you stay in the accent throughout the whole shoot in the sense of do you talk to your co-stars and family members off set in the in the Russian accent? We d I don't. No, I, I mean, not that accent. I think that's just that's not very attractive, is it? <laughs> <laughs> there are times, I mean, you know, there are times... Uh, I mess around I mean, with a lot of accents yeah, at we home. Would, we would do the, do it together. We would joke yeah. about it off, off Yeah, I think you yeah, could offset. stay, yeah, offset. I think it's a, it's a fun accent to be like, you know, to play around with. It's really you're playful. Just, yeah. But, um, and that is the way that you get used to feeling more comfortable and familiar with it. So that, you know, if there was a line change, you'd feel, you'd feel you know, um, you can access it quicker. And we would do warm-ups together and yeah. every day. So you just get it. You just wake up and you start doing it. So when you when you're firing the bows, yeah. are those ever actually firing, or is it just CGI? How do they do that? Well, they would never give me a, a real weapon to hurt people. <laughs> no, you're right. Like, 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 <laughs> like if someone's <laughs> off camera, you don't. Yeah, off fire. camera, getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> the arrow's got to go somewhere. No, man, we can't use real arrows. I mean, only uh, for close-up tool, you actually pull a real arrow and and line it up. So you know you're not putting a CGI arrow at that point. But it's still dangerous at that point because you don't want to release a the bowstring with, a, with an arrow in it, because it's going to go somewhere. Yeah, and for you, you have some pretty epic... I'm always using a real computer. Correct. <laughs> I'm it's not when turned I, on. When I, it's not, no, it's no, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not turned on, <laughs> but there is a real screen. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Right. I need to know that. Now, here's some scenes where you get to fire a gun, which is awesome. There was, there was a, uh, yeah, a one yeah. pretty epic shot of that. You, yes. Are there real bullets in that? No, yes. No, that is, I'm very method. I'm mm. very method, so I actually... Demand that there's real bullets and all and in real. It's in your contract. It's in my contract. Yeah, we I won't. Didn't. I won't do it unless. Okay. Um, and so we just have you know bulletproof vests on the, the crew members and it's, just, it's all good. Now I do, I do want to know this though because I didn't get to interview you for the first Avengers that the epic shot in the first one when you jump off that building and turn around backwards. Mm. Yeah. When they shoot that on set, do you like is it jumping onto like a bed? Are you like how do they do that moment? Yeah, that Such was a great they, shot. they built like a sort of two story platform and then they put a pad on the ground. It you know, fall like about twenty feet, which is pretty cool, and uh, you just gotta jump off and do the do the turn with confidence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got that the face confidence is pretty to pull awesome. It off. Don't land on the bow. It's <laughs> really, the only thing you had to do. Yeah, how do you like mentally keep your face looking cool, but realize I have to land a certain way? I'm gonna break my neck. Jeremy's yeah. face is always cool. Yeah, it's, always, it's always angry looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always it's always cool looking. Um, you, you do have a pretty extensive backstory that I don't I won't give away what that is, but I'm wondering was that something you had? What was something that you envisioned prior to making this movie about what his backstory was? Had you ever come up with something that was different? from what we see in this particular movie um i, I kind of go with what what they what they um what joss and i talked about in the very beginning doing the in the first one just couldn't do it in the first one and then this one we get to explore a little bit more of it which is exciting but there's you know the, you look at the comic u universe of it and with each character there's a it's a deep sort of backstory with everybody and um they don't like to limit themselves by um me talking about what those are but mm. because it can go into different ways and um, or if they want you dead, then they can just kill you. I'm not going to say any of those. Things. But then you get your own TV show, so it's okay. <laughs> exactly. That, that is true. That's right. Hawkeye that coming to TV. I'm Fox, 8 p.m. Wednesday nights. So I'm, not I'm, happening. I'm there. I'm, 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 I'm going to watch. I'll be, I'll be your only viewer. All so right. Y'all. You give me Hawkeye. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Good, Good to, to see you. you. What's going on? What am I doing? Oh, you're yes, I'm worried about Pepper. Or just saying a bunch of technical jargon to, you know, Jarvis or whatever. And then they overlay that sense to make it seem, you know, multi-dimensional. Now, take me back to the 2008 when you made the first Iron Man. Favreau did a lot of practical effects. I know Whedon does some practical effects as well, but they've gotten, I guess, more CGI because all the, the action scenes are more intense and more insane in these movies sure. over the years. What, was the, what is the biggest difference and similarity to filming the first Iron Man and now Avengers 2? Um, on the first one, we felt like we were trying to add a new menu item to a to you know a, a restaurant that um, well, like chef like the movie <laughs> like you know there's all these formulas that already work so how could we make our own signature dish 
And since then, I see that there was always this back line of, of talent and kind of vision behind us. And they kept replicating different versions of different formulas together. And they obviously all come together in the Avengers franchise. Yes. It's awesome to see you. Thank you hey, so man. much for the interview. You're always wonderful to talk to. Oh, thanks, Thank man. you so much. All right. First of all, congratulations <laughs> to you guys. You guys know I nerd out about movies all the time. So I'm no doubt about you. Yeah, I, I nerd about you, man. So you the whole way. It's like, yes. We, we, we did a little dab and a hug. We did. We did. Boys. Yeah. Boys. The other he made you like, look uh, wicked uh, cool in the hallway. He did. Yeah. Everyone uh, else in the hallway was like, uh, uh, every girl was like, uh, who is this guy? You know him. Yeah. <laughs> I got to talk about the beginning shot though, the continuous take that. How that great done. is that? I want to ask you, once the take get, uh, gets to all of you and you're jumping yeah. out mm. in slow mo, how do they do that shot on uh, set? No idea. I don't know because <laughs> I don't remember any yeah. of those shots being fair. Like it's 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 the magic I of the Marvel. individual bits. Yeah, like the leap or whatever. Yeah, obviously jump on a green or screen. It's green screen. All separate green screens. Yeah. Okay, and somehow overlay them and. So you were on like a motorcycle or whatever yeah, the device yeah. was, and they just kind of like add just, the shots they, in. They make it all work, but they actually painted it like a motorcycle. That's right, that's right. It's that's really good on the yeah. And I, I yeah. prefer the animal. Awesome. Love him. I understand. He's a bit of an animal himself. Animals are good. Say? Yeah, it works yeah. well in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the movie Snowpiercer. <laughs> if you could drop Thor and Captain America onto that train, oh. how would they What would? How would they survive? What, what, they would have taken over. It would have been their train. Wolford is done. Thor is at the front of the train. Yes. Ed Harris, yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. You're done. <laughs> I want to see that. Now, I love the scene in the beginning of the, uh, in the, in the film where you guys are trying to pick up the uh, the hammer. And I wanted to know, in the in the movie world, when you guys were trying to actually lift it, how did they keep it down? What were, what were they doing? They actually couldn't lift it. <laughs> <laughs> that scene wasn't the meant hammer to be is like method. That. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really I was like, good act. Guys, it's not that heavy. And they're like, actually, it is. So that became the joke. Originally, it was like, we're all worthy, huh? Now, as we see you, scenes where you like land as Iron Man and you come out of the suit and it's like peeling back off your body. <laughs> How do they do that? Is it's so cool looking? Very skillfully. I mean, it really is the the best folks in the business. And, you know. You always have to lean into and be comforted by the fact that even though I feel like a schmuck right now while I'm stepping out of nothing into nothing and walking past a camera, um, you just have to, you just have to, it's like somebody who's, who's not a good dancer, but they're just out there just like bringing it, you know, and you're like, I love that confidence. That's what you need to really make the effects work. You have to sell it like it's happening. Like, because I get excited, as, as you do. Nerd tears, I get nerd tears. Yes. I get so geeked out that I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> Literally nerd tears streaming down my face as I'm watching these action That's scenes. That's awesome. When you're in the HUD, the HUD helmet in the helmet and we see you flying, yes. how does that look on set? What are you looking at? What are you seeing? How do they do that? I'm basically sitting in an airport shiatsu massage chair backwards um, with a camera about a quarter of an inch away from my nose going, all right, what's going on? If they showed you the outtakes from that, you would laugh your ass off. <laughs> what are you like, are, you, are they shining lights in your face so it looks like there's things going off? How do they do that? It's a combination of just an extreme-ish close-up um, being told, are we flying, are we upside down, should I be looking left, right? What we amazing, what a team. <laughs> and then they couldn't pick it up, so. <laughs> Yeah. But seriously though, like, is it like, is it like nailed down? <laughs> it is. T hammer. Uh, T hammer. They did nail it down. I think initially they nailed it down, and then we lifted it, and the whole table came up. Yeah. So I think if ultimately they ended up doing something where they kind of secured everything. And, right. Yeah, they did like bolted it into the floor. <laughs> yeah, it had to be. Yeah. I loved, loved, loved what you did with Chris Pratt and the Super Bowl bet and everything. You guys oh, were visiting yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. It was incredible what you were able to do. I'm wondering if there was to be a Thor Captain America bet. Well, he's got to start like in real sports. Yeah. You know what I mean, well, what's Australian football? What is this nonsense? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what that. I don't even know what that. No, you know what? You said you played it though. I saw. I played, yeah. I saw an right. Australian football. Australian rugby, not Australian football. Australian rugby. Yeah, it's much. It's much. It's a tougher sport. It's not. So every guy is six five. Every guy is a Just monster kidding. out there. <laughs> it's true. It's it's a very dangerous <clears throat> sport. Um, it's nothing compared to American football. <laughs> Well, because we don't wear padding and helmets and stuff. Because oh. if you oh. didn't, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna get stuck in customs spine. for I mean, I mean. We need a bet here. Patriots yeah. versus one of his oh, teams. Man. About I wish Brandon Brown are gonna be coming across the middle and uh, just take out one of these guys. Can you stretcher. <laughs> what, a bet? We could go. Well, we were talking about the Floyd uh, uh, oh, Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who are you fight. taking? Well, I went Pacquiao. 
I'll and you take Mayweather. Mayweather. Okay. All right, there it is. Right, so Boom. What there it is. Right. One million uh -oh. dollars. <laughs> I mean, cents. One, how, many, how many dollars is that? A million cents. If you it's win, like seriously, yeah. well, how, 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 how does this play out? How does this play out if you win? Um, um, I don't know. Look at you doing with us right now. You're doing it. You're doing yeah, it. You know what you're this. doing. Come on. You know what you're doing. Come on. I know what I'm doing. How does this play out? Um, you... Give me the bet. This is a real bet. This is on, this is on camera. I know. Yeah. That's, that's why. This, we I have told to tread lightly. One million. I mean, one million. One million real, a realistic bet. Push up. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, you have to um, wear the Thor costume and the Thor wig. In the, in, all, in the next movie. Win win. In the next <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, Russo Brothers gonna allow ever. that. What do I wear? No. Come on, give us something. What's, uh, what do we what do we wager? Oh man, I don't know. Um. um you this is permanent. Uh, <laughs> it's permanent. We you, all know those red lights you, you, permanent. You get one of my children. <laughs> Deal. And, Deal. But if I win, Can I, I get you as my fourth child. <laughs> okay. All right. Win okay. win. <laughs> Damn, that sucks again for me, doesn't it? How did Ultron look on set? Was there any motion capture involved? And how do they make the character look eight feet tall? Do they put you on stilts? How do they do that? It was, you know, the the technology has changed quite a bit, and that. Prior to this, you, prior to I think maybe our film, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but um, if you were a, a, a you know a computer.